Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this new series of in-depth videos covering the Arrow Lancaster, we shall begin by way of an introduction with a wartime 1943 overview of the Lancaster bomber that would have been issued to both air and ground crew at the time. I hope you find this interesting. The Avro Lancaster 1 and 3 are all metal mid-wing monoplanes, the former having four Rolls-Royce Merlin 20s and the latter four Merlin 28 or 38 power plants. Both have variable pitch constant speed propellers. The Mark 1 and Mark 3 aircraft differ only in respect to the power plants and associated surfaces and controls. They are designed and equipped for heavy bomber or troop carrier duties, normally carrying a crew of seven, consisting of captain, flight engineer, air bomber, navigator, wireless operator, mid-upper gunner, and rear gunner. The fuselage is constructed of light alloy and incorporates transverse formers braced with longitudinal stringers covered with a light alloy skin. Two longerons carry the cross members of the main floor in which the bomb gear is housed. To facilitate transport, the fuselage is divided into four portions, that is the front portion comprising the nose and front centre portions, the intermediate centre portion consisting of the fuselage between the spars and the centre section of the main plane, and the rear centre portion, and the rear fuselage which carries the tail unit. The main plane is of two spar type and consists of two outer planes attached to a centre section which is integral with the fuselage. The outer planes are tapered in plan and elevation and the skin covering is of light alloy sheet, with the exception of the ailerons, which are fabric covered. The leading edge is reinforced for balloon barrage protection and is fitted with cable cutters. Six fuel tanks are housed in the main plane, one in the centre section on each side of the fuselage, and two in each outer plane. The main wheel units are housed in the inboard engine nacelles at the outer ends of the centre section. The tailplane is of similar construction to the main plane and has fabric covered elevators and twin metal covered fins and rudders. The entrance door is on the starboard side of the fuselage just forward of the tailplane. The door opens inwards and an entrance ladder stowed inside the fuselage above the door is hooked to the bottom of the door frame when the door is in use. The flying controls are conventional pendulum type rudder pedals operating the rudders and the hand wheel type control column operating the ailerons and elevators. Tubular push-pull connections are used except for the aileron controls in the fuselage which consists of chains, tie rods and cables. Trimming tabs are inset in the trailing edges of the rudders, elevators and ailerons and balance tabs are fitted to the elevators and ailerons. Mark IV automatic controls are employed. Hydraulically operated split trailing edge flaps extend from the fuselage sides to the ailerons. The undercarriage consists of two retractable main wheel units one under each inboard engine nacelle and a fully castering tailwheel unit which is not retractable. Each main wheel unit is retracted backwards and upwards into the engine nacelle by means of two hydraulic jacks. When retracted the units are completely fared in by doors which are interconnected to the shock absorber struts and automatically closed when the wheel retracts. A compressed air system is installed for lowering the main wheels in an emergency. The four engines, which are equipped with two speed superchargers, are mounted on the cell structures built out of the centre and outer plane spars. 
Fuel is normally supplied to the port and starboard engines from the port and starboard tanks respectively, but when required, the four engines may be fed from one side by means of a balanced cock system. The oil tanks are mounted in the engine nacelles behind the fireproof bulkheads. The engines are pressure cooled and are fitted with constant speed propellers. The coolant radiator is mounted in a duct underneath the engine and is fitted with a thermostatically controlled shutter. The outboard engines are protected by armour plate fitted to the bottom of the fireproof bulkhead and to the bottom of the nacelle front former. A single pump mounted on the inboard engine supplies power for the hydraulic operation of the retractable undercarriage units, the main plane flaps, bomb door jacks, carburetor air intakes and fuel jettisoning. Another pump is mounted on each engine that supplies the power for each turret as follows. The front, mid-upper, mid-lower turret if fitted and the rear turret. An RAE compressor mounted on the port inboard engine working at low pressure, operates the automatic controls, and a Haywood compressor on the starboard inboard engine, working at high pressure, operates the pneumatic brake and radiator shutter system, and on the B Mark III aircraft, the slow running cutouts are also included. Vacuum pumps are mounted on each inboard engine, and operate the gyroscopic instruments on the instrument flying panel. The engines are started electrically from ground accumulators or from the aircraft's own accumulator and hand turning gear is provided for maintenance purposes only. The gun armament consists of 0.303 inch Browning guns in hydraulically operated turrets, two in the FN5 nose turret, two in the FN50 mid upper turret, two in the FN-64 mid-lower turret if fitted and four in the FN-20 rear turret. Various bomb loads may be carried in the bomb compartment in the lower portion of the fuselage. These include small bomb containers, mines and bombs from £250 to £4,000 each. The bomb doors, which are hydraulically controlled, must be opened before the bombs can be released. A 24 volt electrical installation is provided, the power being supplied from two 1500 watt generators, one in each inboard engine. These generators work in conjunction with four 12 volt 40 amp hour accumulators, interconnected to give a 24 volt 80 amp hour supply to operate all the services. An electrical services panel and an auxiliary fuse panel is fitted on the starboard side of the fuselage just forward of the front spar. They carry the fuses and charging instruments. The radio equipment consists of a TR9F or TR1196 set remotely controlled by the pilot and a TR1335 set at the navigator station and transmitter 1154 and receiver 1155 set at the wireless operator station. Beam approach R3003 or R3090 and T3135 and R3136 equipment is also installed. Hand operated de-icing equipment is installed for the air bomber's window and the pilot's windscreen. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing and also click the bell. Remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.